Hi, welcome back to the Rhinobahn how-to video series. My name's David Allure. The topic of today's video segment is proper Rhinobahn tool calibration. Each and every morning, a Rhinobahn operator will need to calibrate their Rhinobahn tool. Using the various energy settings on the tool, we're gonna select one that gives us an optimal bond. An optimal bond in light of today's ambient job site conditions and the membrane type and thickness. So we'll show you just how easy this calibration process can be. The first thing we'll review are the required materials to do your tool calibration. You're gonna want a good pair of pliers for pulling a welded plate, a marking crayon, and obviously a piece of job membrane. Be sure that the membrane's good and clean on the back side. No boot prints and certainly no moisture. Clean, dry membrane. Then we're gonna set our piece of membrane up for the actual calibration. We're gonna select energy settings zero through plus four. So about nine to 12 inches apart, mark a zero, a plus one, a plus two, a plus three, and a plus four. It's a good idea to time, date, and stamp your membrane swatch so that you have proof of proper calibration. Once you've marked up your calibration swatch, simply cover the plates. And as you can see ahead of time, I took the time to mark the middle of each of the plates with my marking crayon. I recommend this during calibration just to be sure that you've got the pool tool properly aligned over each of these plates. Now it's time to perform a successive weld at a weld at a zero, a plus one, a plus two, a plus three, and a plus four. Once we've allowed each of those assemblies to cool, we'll take the magnets off, pull the plates, and do a good visual inspection. All right, now it's time to perform each one of our calibration welds. With our Rhino Bond tool properly plugged into its power source, we'll select the energy setting corresponding with our first sample weld. In this case, it's a zero. So we'll set the Rhino Bond tool to energy setting double zero, hit the select button to lock that energy se selection in, center our tool over our red mark, hit our activation button, and in five seconds the tool will be done. Lift the tool, center one of the Rhino magnets directly over the weld, move to your next site, and change your energy setting to a plus one. Perform your next weld. And place your clamp over your magnet, and the third weld. Center your tool over your location, change the energy setting to a plus two. Hit select to continue, activate your tool. Lift the tool, cover your weld site with your heat sink magnet, move to position number three, which is a plus three. Hit select to lock in your energy setting and hit activate. Simply lift the tool, cover your welds, and on to our fifth and final calibration at a plus four, hitting select to lock it in, activating the tool. Lift the tool, cover our final weld. So we've successfully completed five successive calibration welds, each at a different energy setting, from a zero to a plus four. We're gonna allow each of these welds to cool to the touch before we pull them with our channel locks. Once we pull each one of these plates, we'll be doing a visual inspection to see which energy setting gave us an optimal bond. Let's get down to pulling the plates. Starting with our zero plate, the easiest way to pull a rhino plate is to first bend up a tab to grip with. Once a tab is built, get a good firm grip using your channel locks, put your heel here, and give it a good pull. All right, now that we have each one of our five plates pulled with a pair of channel locks, it's important to do a visual inspection. Let's take a look at the anatomy of the plate first of all. This raised circular surface here, we call it the donut. This is the bonding surface of the plate. This is where we wanna see the back of our roofing membrane stuck entirely to this surface in a 360 degree circle. All right, upon visual inspection of our first energy setting zero weld, we can clearly see that it's probably not enough energy. How do I know that? We've got some voids here in our 360 degree circle. So zero is not quite enough energy for an optimal bond. Let's move on to the next weld. Moving to our plus one, we see some voids here in our 360 degree mark. The same thing here with our plus two, we still see some voids. But look what happens when we stepped up to our plus three. We got what I would consider an optimal bond. 360 degree coverage of that membrane adhered to the top side of the Rhino Bond plate. So in this case, I would mark this plate as our acceptable weld, both on the front and the back of the membrane.
and I would time date and stamp it at 11.54 a.m. and roll this up and put it away for proof of proper calibration. We hope you found today's content useful. And as a reminder, you can find all of this information online at omgroofing.com. Thank you very much.